Hello everyone, I'm one of the Applications Managers here at ODI, and on behalf of ODI, I want to thank you for joining us today at our ODI University. Today's topic of discussion is going to be the art of solvent welding. The art of solvent welding means that you're going to be using one of our solvent cements and our primers in combination to complete the perfect solvent cement joint. It's not a gluing process. These products actually create chemical reactions to the surface of the different pipe materials that you may be working at in the field. One of them may be a flexible PVC cement. Another one may be a black ABS pipe material. Okay? We also have some of you that work exclusively with the white PVC. And then in the PVC and the CPVC categories, we also have two grays. These are a heavier duty shell so that they're approved for a higher pressure application. And then finally, we have the CPVC pipe material, which is normally recognized in the milky uh, yellow color. All right, so when choosing the right cement for your application, you're gonna have to look at things like, what's my humidity? I might be working in a ditch where it's damp conditions, okay? What's the set and cure times that I have? We'll discuss those a little bit later, but it's, they're two very different uh, processes during that solvent cementing application. Uh, we're also going to look at, you know, what body of cement do I need? And then correctly, what cement am I going to need that is complementing the materials that I'm using for my project? Some of these uh, cements that we offer are going to be like our lava cements. We have the orange lava cement, and then we also have the blue lava cement. The blue is for PVC applications. The orange is for the CPVC applications. These we refer to in the field as cut-in cements. These are utilized when I have a very small time frame to shut down a water system, cut in a T and a possible valve so that I can do some additional work later, and then get that system back up and running. Like say, for example, if you're staying in a hotel, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. is gonna be your time frame to work in because when you go to bed and when you get up in the morning, you're paying for that room, you expect that water to be there. We have a rain or shine product that you can see right here. Rain or shine is good for those wet conditions. A lot of our sprinkler companies actually prefer this when they're doing underground work. We also have a heavy duty gray. In today's demonstration, we're gonna be utilizing the clear heavy duty cement. The only difference between these two products are the colors. Uh, we have an all weather cement. If you're in an all weather climate, if you're in a, a cold weather climate and you have a situation where, you know, those temperatures are gonna drop, Almost all of our cements and primers are approved for uh, temperatures between 40 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. The all weather, for example, is approved down to minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. We also have a hot blue formula that we formulated for our sprinkler uh, customers. We also have a black, uh, an orange CPVC cement. It's not as quick curing as our lava, but it does the same process. We have a transition cement. It's a milky green. What that allows you to do is, if your local jurisdiction allows, is to solvent cement at one PVC to an ABS transition connection together. That way there, you don't have to use just one pipe if you have multiple contractors. On the end, we also have our black ABS cement. ABS cement is utilized with only the ABS pipe material. Depending on what region you're in, that could also come in a milky white. Uh, if you're up in a, one of our Canada customers, you'll also see ABS cement available in yellow. So as you can see, we have a variety of formulas that are formulated specifically for each pipe material and each application. On the bottom of all of our cans, there's gonna be a date code. This date code is written in Julian format. What that means is there's going to be two groups of numbers and letters. In the first grouping, you're gonna have five numbers. The first two numbers in that group are going to be the year. So for example, if this was January the 2nd right now in 2021, we would have a 21 for the first two numbers. The next three numbers are going to be the day of that year. So if it's the second day, it would be a 002. The second is going to be a group of three numbers and two letters. The first number is going to be the shift. The second two numbers are going to be the batch. And then finally, you're gonna have two letter combinations, either a CL or an OM. All of our cements are manufactured in Cleveland, Ohio, or Omaha, Nebraska. Um, with these date codes, if you feel there's ever a concern with the product quality and you relay those to us, we save the retains for those. And what we can do is we can check those retains to see if this product was stored in the right temperatures with the lids sealed properly 
if that quality remained good. If not, then we explore other options to try to help you figure out exactly what happened. Also, we're going to look at our primer. Our primer comes in clear and purple. Okay, Another color identifier. Absolutely no difference between the formulas, just the color itself. As a contractor in the field, I used to actually use colors on different colored pipes. So I would maybe use a gray solvent cement on a white PVC piping system. I would use the purple primer. So as I would walk the job site, I'd be able to see, did I prime and solvent cement every joint before I start the testing process? So just make sure that you're choosing the right cement for your application. When it comes to the cements themselves, okay, you're gonna have different bodies. You're gonna have a regular body, which is approved for up to two inch in Schedule 80 pipe. It's gonna be approved up to four inch in PVC non-pressure pipe. You're gonna have your medium bodied cement, such as the all weather. The medium bodied cement is gonna be approved for all schedules up to six inch in size. You're gonna have your heavy duty bodies, which is gonna be approved for 12 inch pressure and 18 inch non-pressure. And then finally, your extra heavy duty bodies, okay, are gonna be approved for 30 inch PVC piping and up to 24 inch in CPVC piping. So there again, we have a formula for every application you're doing in the field. We do follow ASTM standards and a couple things in the ASTM standards that we want to focus on today are dauber size. ASTM standards state that the dauber size must be at least half the diameter of the pipe that you're solvent cementing together. So OD offers a 3 8 dauber. We offer an inch and a half dauber. When we get to those larger diameter pipes, we offer a suave and then we also offer a roller. The roller and the suave come with caps on them that will fit our one gallon cans. So for those contractors who are doing the larger diameter pipes or using more solvent cement per application, the suavers and rollers come in very handy. One of the things in the field that you'll find is when in between the use, the lid on the can will always be left off to the side. This means that I'm actually evaporating the solvents inside that product. And in a solvent cement application, the solids that are left inside there, which we refer to as our resins, what will happen is the solvents will start to evaporate and the formula itself is going to start to get thicker. So we always recommend that that lid stay at least covering that hole, but we also offer an adjustable dauber for that too, if you don't want to keep putting that lid back on. Our adjustable dauber fits into the mouth of uh, our cans, and then as you get less cement in there, you can pull the dauber out and then reach everything down to the bottom. So the ASTM standards state that I must cut the pipe end square. Once I cut them square, I have to clean off any excess material on the outside of them. I have to deburr them, chamfer them, and we'll talk about chamfering a little more in a moment. I want to then make sure I dry fit for interference. I want to then prime properly. I want to finally solvent cement accurately. And then I want to allow the proper set time and cure times before I test that system and put it into service. So when it comes to deburring, there's several tools on the marketplace. This is a simple one, for example. This one here, I can utilize to deburr the inside of the pipe. I can then switch it over and then I can chamfer the outside of the pipe. As you can see here, I have a soft edge on the outside of this pipe. This is called the chamfer. It's 10 30 seconds of the degree, basically, which is 10 to 15 degrees uh, angle. And this softness takes away that sharp edge, which will later on shave the cement from the inside of the fitting as you're pushing it in. Once I chamfer and I uh, deburr, then I want to do my dry fit. I've marked some pre lines on this uh, piece of pipe right here to show you what that means. So as I push this pipe into this fitting, when I reach this first line, I start to feel some interference. The pipe is touching the inside of the fitting. The pipe is extruded, so the outside of this pipe diameter is going to be pretty consistent. The inside of this fitting has a slight taper molded into it. So that means that when I'm pushing this pipe in, I should feel resistance between one third and two thirds of the way in. Now, once I solve and cement this, I'm actually going to finish up where it's going to be fully engaged. This portion down here where I started to fill the interference first will become what is called a fused area. This remainder, all the solvents, uh, all the solids in our cements will fill in that gap and that'll be a, become a bonded for strength area. Without this fusion area down here, okay, your pipe over a period of time could stand a chance of failure. Okay, so you always wanna make sure you dry fit 
and make sure that you have one third to two thirds of the way in, you start to feel that interference. Okay, so when it comes to chamfering, it's one of the most missteps that we have. A lot of people say, ah, it just takes too much time. Well, the thing of it is, a lot of folks, they assemble these pipes time after time, year after year, and they never have a leak. That's because they've been able to have an application where the flaws or the missteps that they've had, they were never exposed. It's like getting a speeding ticket. If I drive 80 miles an hour for a while and I don't get a ticket, well, bottom line is, I feel that 80 miles an hour is the new approved speed limit. But once I get that ticket, now I'm gonna pay attention, okay? Same thing goes with all the steps. If I don't cut it square, I'm not gonna have a consistent fusion area. If I don't chamfer it properly, I'm gonna scrape off the cement. So now, I'm gonna actually have leak paths that I'm forming as I'm putting the system together. Depending on whether you test that system or not, you may not know you have that problem until you have a backup later maybe some possible water hammering inside of a potable water line. You never know what that situation is going to be, but it could be very costly to you at that time. One of the things that we recommend is you have the right chamfer tool for your application. So I showed you the cone earlier. Does the deburring, does the chamfering on the outside. There's also some smaller tools, this particular one. Uh, sprinkler contractors like to use this. It will do half inch, three quarter and one inch PVC pipe. What I have here is I have a roto zip. The roto zip, we put a router bit into the top of it. This doesn't know pipe size. I can chamfer any pipe with this. It's battery operated, so everybody has these batteries around being charged. I can take a pipe, hold it in my hand, turn this on, and there you go. I just chamfered that pipe that quickly. That's a very important step in the process, and with the right tools, it doesn't become cumbersome whatsoever. So, another thing that I want to talk about is the application of the primer and cement. So, as you can see here, as I turn this piece, I have very consistent control all the way around. This primer is ending outside the fitting hub, okay, so I'm going to get good coverage. But what happens is, most people, when they're putting it onto smaller diameter pipes, their wrist is orbital. So, what that means is, I'm going to have really great coverage on the top and probably on the sides. But when I get to the bottom, because I'm going in that orbital manner, I'm gonna be missing an area down here. This pipe, I'm never gonna change position of it. So if I'm gonna apply the primer that way, I'm also gonna apply the cement, which means I am not gonna get enough product down here whatsoever, okay? So let's go through all the steps together and we'll uh, complete a proper joint. One thing to remember is hand protection. Depending on your sensitivity, the solvents in this cement could cause you irritation. We also want to make sure eye protection. Eye protection for this is a must. Also, depending on your sensitivity of your breathing, you want to make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area. Most room spaces will create that ventilation for you, but sometimes opening a door or a window is necessary to put a fan in there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take my pipe, I've cut it square, I've deburred the inside of it and I've chamfered the outside of it. I've already pre-checked my interference fit and I have that available. So now I'm ready to go ahead and I'm ready to solve and cement this joint. So while holding this joint in my hand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my primer out first. What I want to do is I want to prime the fitting first. Because remember, that fitting is going to have memory to it. And as I insert this pipe into it, that memory I'm gonna change forever, so it's gonna to wanna to resist it, so I wanna make sure that I get it soft enough. I'm gonna then re-dip, and I'm gonna go ahead and knock off a little bit of excess. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go around my pipe. I'm gonna make sure that I'm consistent in my motion so that I don't have any bare spots on the bottom or the top, okay? And I'm gonna re-dip once again, and I'm gonna knock off the excess, and I'm gonna move forward, and I'm gonna hit that fitting again. It's very important to remember that once I apply this primer, to complete this joint, I have five minutes. So I'm gonna apply the primer, I'm gonna apply the cement, and I'm gonna put this together within five minutes. If for some reason you do prime the pipe and fittings and you have to walk away, you get a phone call or something like that, that's okay. You can start the process over again. Once you apply cement, you can't do that. Our, our primers do not have solids in them, so you're not building up the uh, overall dimensions of the uh, pipe or the inside dimensions of that fitting. With cements, because of the solids, as the solvents evaporate, I'm gonna build up those dimensions and now I no longer have the correct fit. 
So once I've primed, I'm within my five minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my cement. In this particular case, we're gonna be using the OD Heavy Duty Cement. Now with the cement, I'm going to apply it to the pipe surface first. There's gonna be enough cement in this dauber that I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the inside of the fitting hub. The reason why is I do not want excess material inside the fitting hub because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna push that inside and I could possibly start a small blockage inside the pipe. Now, I'm gonna re-dip, I'm gonna clean off, and I'm gonna hit the outside of this pipe surface again. And once I do that, now I'm gonna take both, and as I push them together, I'm also gonna apply a quarter turn. And now I'm gonna hold this. Depending on the conditions that you're working in, how humid, how cold it is, the pipe sizes themselves, sometimes you may need 30 seconds or a little bit longer to put this together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna utilize my rag. I'm gonna wipe off the excess. And now I have the perfect solvent cemented joint. The thing to remember is the set time starts after I get this assembled. We spoke about that earlier. That means my set time is determining, well, when can I move this around? Maybe when can I add another piece of pipe to that system? It's completely different from your cure time, which determines when can I pressurize this system to test it with the water? Or when can I actually initiate service into this system? Those are two very different time frames. We do have literature online at od.com. You can visit at any time. And we have the cure times and the set times available to you. So we hope this has helped you today to create nothing but success in all of your future uh, solvent cement joints. And uh, if you do have any questions, like I said, you can reach out to us for further details. But thank you again, and we'll see you soon.